I have a unique situation because people know the life that I used to live and now they're seeing the life that I live now. So people, my family and friends are eager to help me. Hello and welcome to episode 12 of the Smart Agents Podcast. My name is Michael Walter and I'll be your host. Each episode, we bring you interviews with real estate insiders from all across the country and from all levels of experience. Our goal is for you to be inspired by your fellow agents, and today's featured agent should do just that. If you have an awesome story or tips to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. We'd love to feature you on an upcoming episode. And now, before we get into today's featured interview, make sure you follow and subscribe to the show on whatever platform you listen to podcasts. You can find it on everything from Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, you name it, we are there. And also, as you can see if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Click the bell to get notifications when each new episode is uploaded. Now, like I said a few moments ago, our featured agent is super inspirational. Tennessee-based agent Frank Butler overcame past legal troubles and is now five years into his real estate career. Not only is he a successful agent, but he is now teaching fellow agents within his brokerage. Today's episode features part one of our conversation. Just kind of getting started out, could you tell me briefly um, kind of where you're at and how long you've been in real estate? Um, In Nashville, Tennessee, been in real estate for um, five years. Mm -hmm. Um, Doesn't usually take the average agent much long, that long to get their license. Mm -hmm. Uh, However, I have uh, just full transparency. I have uh, felonies in my background back from like 1999. Mm -hmm. And... It was a lot. Yeah, I had to go. I had to have hearings. I had to go to the courthouse. I had to get records of almost everything. Mm-hmm. And in the process, probably about two, about two months into the process, like Trek, the um, um, for Tina for Nashville mm-hmm. went silent on me. Mm-hmm. However, I've been around. The, I was around the Keller Williams office, going to classes like for a year. Mm-hmm. So they had this thing where they would, uh, one of the, Ben Kenny, one of the guys, he was like, get, you know, fizzbos and things like that. He would hit them up three times a day. Mm-hmm. So I took that same act and used it towards getting my license when they went cold on me. Yeah. I would call, email. When I got up in the morning, I'd do it at noon and I'd do it again at four o'clock in the afternoon. Right. And I've I done that to the point to where the lady, I called one that lady like, listen, man, this is not my job, but we're going to get you a hearing and we're going to get you in there. You right. know, it was just the not give up because when I started, it was just a random career day that was having at Keller Williams. Mm-hmm. I got an email mysteriously mm-hmm. and nobody showed up but me. Oh, wow. So me and the team leader sat there and talked and, and she told me, she's like, listen, people come in here with your type of situation all the time. She was like, if you don't give up, I promise you it'll work out for you. And I just yeah. took that and ran with it. Uh, and you, and so you've been doing it for five years now? Yep, five years. That's awesome. Congratulations on getting that. Yeah, I appreciate you. Yeah. What, um, so what, what is your main area of focus? What have you been kind of focusing on these last five years? Most of my business has come from family and friends. Mm-hmm. Family, friends, and referrals. Yeah. Um, I found that to be, I think maybe a year, about a year and a half ago, I just really just understood where my business was coming from. Because as you start in real estate, it's a lot of figuring out going on. Mm-hmm. You know, you if it, just like everybody else, I was on HGTV watching these things and thinking like, wow, this is great. Then you get into it and it's like, whoa, <laughs> nobody's, 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 nobody's calling me. <laughs> yeah, you don't. Uh, you mean you, the, you don't have fourteen assistants uh, getting your phone? Yeah, exactly. So, right. Yeah, family and friends, man. I I stopped chasing the big shiny thing. Mm-hmm. Um, in real estate, you go to a lot of classes, you get a lot of information, and it's good to go chase what you think is the next shiny thing. However, people around you are either buying and selling or want to buy and sell. Mm-hmm. and they're doing it with other people because you don't want to be the person that's like bugging family and friends for business all the time. You don't want to be that guy. However, if you go over to the house and there's another sign in the yard, that's a, <laughs> you're probably going to leave. Right. I mean, how many times have you heard of in a neighborhood where the real estate agent lived and their next door neighbor puts up a for sale sign? You're like, what? You know, like I'm right here. 
I talk to you all the time. I say good morning every time we walk out the house. <laughs> However, the fear of, of of asking for the business, the fear of of thinking that somebody else thinks something that you don't even know. People don't go around their day. One thing I learned is people don't go around their day thinking about Frank Butler. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like I am the focus focal point of their day. In real estate, people want to get the job done. If you're the last person to talk to them and convince them, you probably want to get the get the listing or or the uh, buyer's agreement. Yeah. So how did you how did you kind of get over that hump to say, you know what, I'm going to make it to where my family, my friends, they all know that I'm here to, to do this. Well, I, I have a unique situation because people know the life that I used to live and now they see in the life that I live now. So people, my family and friends are eager to help me. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, they're eager to, 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 to push me in and make sure that they're helping my family out Right. for the fact that they may just feel a certain type of way that, they didn't help my family eat. Um, however, with that being said as well, it was just under, I really just sat, I sat down with a coach and it was so simple. She was like, so where your business coming from? Mm-hmm. And as we looked at it, it was just like, I had a few miscellaneous here and there run into, but 90, 95% of it was family and friends. So we just leaned heavier into that. Mm-hmm. Because of that, do you, when you, you know, marketing wise and stuff like that, you're not doing, I, I guess your marketing isn't so broad then you're, you're not casting a huge net. No. Well, this is the thing about marketing. I do some marketing. I do some Facebook. I do some things. It's more to be, I'm not a marketing expert. So it's more, I think I feel for me that more that people see that I'm involved in the business, the more they trust me to do what I do. Yeah. Um, like just doing simple, um, do a story, you know, if you go into an inspection, do a quick story, just kind of going through the life of a, um, a day in the life of a real estate agent. And they see that you're busy, you're doing something, um, to get deep. This is the thing. Um, David Huffaker, um, uh, has the top group at our office in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. He, he put it to me like this, well, he put it to us like this. The internet game has already been won. It's already been won. I don't have the dollars to battle with uh, Gary Ashton. He's with Remax. He's a he's. You you can't ride through Nashville without seeing the sign or listen to the radio without hearing his. Like he is. If you if you Google Nashville real estate, his his website will be the first one that pops up. Yeah. I, I I can't battle with that. There's nothing I can do with that. Right. But for all the people that you do work with, you give them that top rated service, they're going to refer you. Yes. Yes. And, and, and that's what you're looking for. And what I found out to be the biggest advantage to uh, getting referrals. When you're dealing with people buying and selling, some of them have done it before 10 years ago, five years ago, new market today. Right. So what, what ends up happening is let them know up front where the speed bumps are. So if I'm dealing with a buyer, as we go through our presentation, as long as you keep your finances intact, we have two speed bumps, inspection and appraisal. And this is what we do if we run into this, this is what we do if we run into that. And I always give them choices. I'm never making a decision. Now, one of those choices may be walk away. However, when those things do pop up, they already know. Mm-hmm. And that's all that clients want to know in this business. You know, we, the market's hot. I'm going to give you a smooth. Yeah. I want to give you a smooth transaction too, but if our appraisal come back low, like what can I really do? Right. I think that's so important is, you know, preparing somebody for the speed bump that might come up to where they're not going to come back and say, well, you never told me about this. They're like, what? You know, it's just so, I think it's so smart to, you know, be up front with somebody to where their experience with you is only going to be positive. Yes. Yes. And, and understanding, understanding your client, like, especially now with, you know, COVID-19 and all that, um, it's extremely important to be adaptable to the client. You know, you have some clients, we in the South, so 
It is what it is. You know, some people are masked up. Some people are like, hey, man, whatever. I'm trying to buy a house. What you want to do? So, and I'm, I'm not to get into it, but I'm just, you know, I, I flow either way. Mm-hmm. However, being adaptable, mm-hmm. you know, understanding that I may be trying to get this appointment with this person. However, I'm so used to meeting people in person mm-hmm. that I don't adapt and let them even know that we can do a Zoom call. I'm just going for the appointment, going for the appointment instead of being like, however you want to do it, you know, we can meet in person or we can do it on Zoom. What makes you feel more comfortable? I also, I really like your, what you do when you said you're, you know, on social media with during the inspections, kind of the day in the life type thing. Yes. So I think that's, that's really smart just to, to show that behind the scenes. And it, it, it does show you, it does show people that you are constantly involved in their, not only their sale, but maybe somebody else that is looking at, you know, social media and may just stumble upon you and say, Oh, this guy's really, you know, he's into it every single day. Yeah. And, and people want to know that you're into it every single day. People want to know that you have your posts on the market. Um, Cause the thing, if you don't, you will mislead people and you will lead them down the road that just like in the same way you can get referrals from positive actions, you cannot get referrals from negative actions. You know, it, it's, it works both ways. You know, people can say, yeah, he's great. I've done a transaction with him, work with them, or people can say, man, he is terrible. Stay away, stay away, stay away. So you got to be mindful of that as you kind of go through the process. Yeah. I was talking to somebody yesterday and we were talking about building your brand and it, it is as much as you have to pay attention to building your brand. You also have to pay attention to what's going to hurt my brand. And that almost sometimes needs to be a bigger part of it. I, I do not do politics when it comes to social media. I, I don't, I refuse. I don't do politics in my life. So, however, it, it's, it's about to go, what is, what is going haywire? It's about to go berserko right now. And you're going to have some clients, you're going to have some, some, not even just agents, just business people in general, spilling all that out there when we have to understand our brand doesn't have a, a allegiance to anything. You know, our brand has an allegiance to us and what we're trying to present to the people and the service that we're trying to provide. Our brand has nothing to do with politics. It has nothing to do with, I wouldn't say religion, because some people do do that. We have uh, the guy I go to, they have a Christian, you know, um, their mechanic shop, you know, and they advertise that and it works for them. I just think for me, I like to stay outside of those things because I have been caught up and some Facebook things that you may make a comment and you think it's over with, but you wake up the next morning and it is still going. (laughs) (laughs) Right. And at the end of the day, you're there to get the transaction and you don't want to pigeonhole yourself. You don't want to say, you know what, half the population, I can't work with you or you don't want to work with me because of what, you know, your perceived views on me are. That's one of the things that we have to, social media is, is a double-edged sword. You know, it, it can be used to, to, to build and boost your brand. And at the same time, it could be used to, it would just, it will, it will crumble. And not even for the fact that you're on whatever side you may be on. It, it's just for the fact that people are like, I ain't got time for that. Right. Right. You know, I, I'm, I'm trying to get something done here. I really don't care about none of that that you have going on right there. Right. And, you know, the thing with social media is it, it seems like it something that maybe you said two, three years ago, it always comes back to like, somebody's going to find it. Something's going to come back. It, you know, it, it happens. I, I, you know, on Facebook, they'll show you where, you know, something you posted 15 years ago popped up. Right. And you look at it and I'm, I look at it. Something, I'm like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> like, like what, where, where was I at then in my mind? To where I decided that that was okay, right? You know, right. so right. It's, it's it's just and understanding, like you said, that these things come back up. And like I tell my kids, the great thing about, about the internet is, is your crowd is somewhere out there, though. Mm-hmm. Your crowd is out there, and once you find that crowd on social media, you can really lean into it. Long as you don't keep a lot of theatrics and stuff into it, you know, kind of go real overboard with whatever you're leaning into. You know, because it's, it's one guy, his wife had breast cancer, so he went and got the uh, pink moving truck, pink car, changed the size of pink. Everything was pink, 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 pink. Mm-hmm. He was able to lean into that, you know, yeah. as a support for his wife. Mm-hmm. So 
great cause, right? I had plenty of people that had um, breast cancer, great cause. However, all causes are not equal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's definitely, there's some causes that are so polarizing that you definitely want to stay for, but then the, you know, the breast cancer thing, it's everybody has to, you know, that you got to be a pretty bad person if you don't feel some empathy for that. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. Exactly. It, that case definitely works, but there are some out there and a lot of them out there that it definitely would not. I really want to thank Frank for joining me and I hope you enjoyed part one of our conversation. On the next episode, we're actually going to share part two of our conversation where we dive more into Frank's philosophy on leaning in. Once again, if you think you or someone else on your team has an awesome story or tip to share with our community, send us a message at feedback at smartagents.com. Well, that wraps things up for this episode. But remember, follow the show wherever you listen to podcasts and make sure to subscribe to the Smart Agents YouTube channel. Again, I'm Michael Walter, and I'll see you on the next episode.